Hi everybody, Adam Steele from Hot Pole Studios here, and today we're going to be talking about the PSP Infinity Strip, which is their kind of all-in-one like 500 series style plugin that is a real competition to the other big boys. Let's check them out. Now, before we have a quick look at the Infinity Strip and talk about all the different sections of this plugin, uh, let's do a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and of course, it's always appreciated if you hit the like button. Uh, check out our Discord channel where we talk about music tech in our off time as well, because we are, of course, full time audio nerds. And if you would be so kind, check out our Patreon, because that is where we are supported by you to do this full time. So anyway, I'm gonna turn this round now and show you the screen. We're gonna go through a bit of a mix, talk about Infinity Strip and what it can do. All right, so what I'm gonna do is recreate uh, a mix that I did for a band. This is Walk Out by Minutes to Recover. And I'm gonna try and recreate this mix. Uh, this sounds Okay, this has got very minimal plugins on now. I got rid of most of the processing. Left the background vocals because that just take forever. And stripped pretty much everything out. The drums, uh, bass, I left the amp. Guitars, I left the amps and a bit of true iron. So this is what I've got. So let's look at the drums and use Infinity Strip on the drums. I already went ahead and did the kick, and it sounds like this. So there are three or four different uh, preamps. There's ADC 90s, that looks cool. That's nice and crunchy, I like it. But then there's uh, 60s. Which is a little softer. 70s. I can really crunch that. There's, there's a gain here which I can auto gain if I hit auto and play it. That seems to push the gain up by a few dB just to bring it in line with my reference, which was minus 17.4. If I brought that to minus 18, that would probably just bring it down just a touch. And so I have the drive quite high on a kick drum because it really helps it kick come through. Let's try the 80s one. Yeah, it's not the same as EQing. I tend to find that that driving an analog preamp properly can, up until a certain point where you have to back it off, provide you with uh, some real presence and crunch, especially on a nice fat kick drum. So I didn't uh, really know about the 90s one, but this is cool. Uh, that'll be like kind of the Akai samplers with 12-bit converter, which is really nice. Any kind of drive effect like that though, you have to treat them all separately. I went with the 70s one. And what I tend to do is go too far with whatever drive is on whatever plugin and pull it back until it sounds full again. Cool. I can just mute a few of these effects and just go right to the start. So if I turn that off and on, yeah, sounds bigger, fatter, 
And that's mostly from the drive, not from the 2 dB of extra volume. So there's a lot of low end going on in this particular kick. So the basic filters, I just filtered out just below 37 hertz, but it's nice to have options for a low pass filter as well. I tend to use things like that on guitars a lot. And just being able to pick your filter and your octave uh, steepness, because that can really affect the overall tone without adding any CPU overhead, really. Uh, that means that, especially on a guitar, I'd come back to that, but I'm gonna leave that off on this kick. But just having this means that I can scoop out that low end nice and natural. And then next up is a VCA compressor. But if we look at the compressor choice, we've got an optical, uh, which is like an LA-2A type thing, FET, which is an 1176 type thing, and VCA, which works well for me on kick drums, like a DBX-160, that kind of thing. And I've set this to have plenty of attack. Good old four to one and set the threshold. And it's got a side chain high pass filter, which is a great thing to have added in there because it means that the ultra low end in the kick isn't making the compressor go crazy. So if there's a couple of gentle hits on the kick drum, which have loads of low end, that doesn't still make the compressor go crazy. Bringing in an EQ afterwards, uh, there's a few choices here. There's the channel Q, which has loads of different options for specific bandwidths. That's got four different bands you can pick from here and I'm actually scooping out a little bit of low mid and a little bit of that clickiness, that two, two and a half K and bringing in some air. So without it all, And with it's just a little bit less cardboardy and a bit more airy. But if I switch between the different EQ types, they definitely all have their own characteristic. And then from there, I then added a VCA limiter, which I was very gentle with and made sure there was plenty of attack to let that kick through. But that's there just to help with those uh, bum, 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 kind of semi-ghost noted kicks so that it just shaves a few dB off the real slammed ones and doesn't do that with uh, the ones that kind of the general area that I like. So it's just like having an extra safeguard, which means that I can push the kick level up in the mix by another dB or two without it being something that can then overload the mix and be louder than everything. Then here there's plus infinity in Finistrip and you can add any of these. So there's all the filters, preamps. There's a gate, which I don't need to use here, but that would be good. I uh, might use it on the bass. An expander and a ducker, which is always cool. Uh, there's a master control, which is exactly as it seems. I uh, don't need that here, but it's nice that they've included it. And then there's a de-esser if we need that inbuilt, which is great. Slate, why don't you have a de-esser in yours? And a de-hummer, really, really useful. So if you're in an area where you've got say, a, a guitar track, like a single coil guitar track that's got a little bit of buzz on, you could pick the uh, cycle uh, hertz frequency for your area and then just find that and then just tame that a little and find those frequencies and just take them out just a bit without really damaging the uh, the rest of the signal. And the fact that that's inbuilt is great. And so the settings, there's a full size view where you can see loads of stuff here. The space for gate and control and more inserts. There's mini view mode where we can have it more uh, tucked away and just touch each one. So if you're struggling for screen space, you could have several of these for several channels, which is really useful.
but I like this resizable view myself. Uh, can you, yep, you can move all these around so you can change the order as and when you like. There's SCX, which this little button down here means that you get side chaining. So if you've got a compressor on, I don't know, a bass that you want to be triggered from the kick drum, you can send that kick drum and using Reaper or whatever DAWs routing to get extra channels going into an extra input, you can use the compressors, limiters, side chained from something else. That's really, really useful. And then there's a monitoring mode to see what exactly just one module is doing. But it does say, warning, you have turned on monitoring mode in one of the modules. Which means, looking at it, that it turns on everything up to that plugin. Really, really useful. All these uh, knobs as well, if I hover over them, it gives me a nice number underneath of exactly what it is if there's a value that's hidden and what it should be. And I think the precursor, that's the kind of the API-ish, I think, one that I liked. So that's my kit. Now let's move on and do that on the overheads. Cool. I think I've got an overhead mix that I'm pretty happy with there. So I really cranked the drive on these overheads. I scooped out with the basic filters, everything up to 120 hertz. But there is a Pro Filters, which has a nice extra section in the middle there where I could... Uh, in fact, let's do that. Let's take out a bit of that kind of boxy 5-600 hertz thing. Now there's an option here to uh, use that as an extra high or low filter or use it as a notch or even a very wide band, which is awesome. And then the sidechain filters, which can be used for, I would imagine that's to filter the sidechain external that's going into a compressor, which means that then if you do that, if you've got something like a, a kick that's gonna affect a bass, then you can then EQ that to taste as well. So I'll definitely be checking that out. In fact, now that the overheads are done, I'm gonna to move to the uh, the room mics and I'm gonna use that sidechain function. This is gonna be really useful for me. So let's bring up the default and listen to the room. So I'm very quickly going to get myself a nice, fairly well compressed room sound and then we're going to do something else.
there. So I've got a pretty heavily smashed, heavily compressed FET compressor there. So what I'm going to do behind that is I'm going to send my snare, which isn't currently on, to the side chain three and four of this uh, room. And what I'm going to do is add a... What am I going to do? I think it's a gate that I want. But I actually want this to be sidechain triggered. There we go, excellent. So that's what I'm doing, is I'm using a gate, using the side chain from the snare. So what the snare is doing is the snare is making the, the overheads go louder. So every time the snare hits, the, the whole uh, room sound goes bang, bang, bang. But because it's been heavily compressed before, it's kind of sat and squashed and gives us a big kind of pumping kind of sound. But then afterwards, and I can use this EQ's gain to just bring back that, say, 4 dB of range that we've used on the gate, because the gate at minus infinity me means that it's quite useless in this case. But by doing this and let's try adding in this sidechain filter and see what happens. All right, so what this is doing now is this red uh, module is, like I suspected, uh, filtering and EQing the sidechain without me needing an extra plugin on the sidechain. So if you've got something like a kick or a snare triggering and there's too much high end or too much low end or something in that trigger source, I can uh, EQ that into the sidechain and that's incredibly powerful. Let's make this compressor even more aggressive. Right, so that's our kick and our overheads and room together. Let's bring in the magic of the snare with the Infinistrip. Definitely want a VCA on this snare and I definitely want to drive it with the 70s.
That's interesting that the side chains. All right, there's a sample there, which I don't think I need anymore. Let's go to a section with the toms. Awesome. So, oh, double stack then. What have I done? Cool. I'm just going to put an, uh, a limiter on these just in case the toms get a bit loud. Don't think the hats need anything. Let's look at the bass. Cool. So the limiter here, the VCA limiter is really helping me to keep the bass in line, despite the fact that I've driven it quite hard and use the opto compressor to give the bass a little bit of life. So it's not just completely flattened and marmalized to death. And I have added quite a lot of low end here in the bass because the bass seemed a little bit low end light. So that yeah, that has uh, meant that just if there's any thump on the bass where it's got a bit too much low end, the limiter should keep that in check. Now, onto the tricky bits. So I've got quite a lot of guitars going here. Let's infinite strip this bad boy. Probably don't need a compressor on the guitars. Cool, so I've quite heavily filtered this, but there's also something going on in the low range. I'll just try and filter.
Interesting. The uh, the precursory cue there was really adding something in the mid range that on this guitar I didn't like, but I bet on the vocals that will be absolutely perfect. And so let's check the next set of guitars. Not bad mixing the two together very quickly. Let's put the bass and drums and guitars together. That was just me turning down the uh, the plugin that's on the master true I and just bring that down a bit. Let's turn off the de that's on the vocal because I saw one in Infinistrip. Let's just look at this vocal. This is going to need some work because it's a very dynamic uh, performance from a young Ben. So the first thing we're going to do is get the seven, probably the 70s preamp and drive it along. And it is enough to spend with you when you walk out, please shut my door. I don't want to hear from you anymore When you walk out, please shut my door I don't want to see your face around here anymore Anymore Let's limit this as well, really get some compression and limiting going on this vocal Really, uh Let's get an opto compressor in there as well. And it is enough to spend with you. When you walk out, please shut my door. I don't want to hear from you anymore. When you walk out, please shut my door. I don't want to see your face around here anymore. Anymore. Now that I saw that DS, so let's get that in there probably after the first EQ, which is going to add some top. And it is enough to spend with you. When you walk out, please shut my door. I don't want to hear from you anymore. Anymore. Play. I never said we had to stay like this forever When one more second is enough to spend with you When you walk out, please shut my door I don't Wha want Let's see how this sounds in the mix I never said Quiet Let's push the out Everything else is louder, so let's bring everything else down. Play. I never said we had to stay like this forever. When one more second is enough to spend with you. When you walk out, please shut my door. I don't want to hear from you anymore. When you walk out, please shut my door.
I've got to say, I'm very impressed. Uh, this mix came together in how long have I been filming now? 30 minutes that took uh, for me to not only throw that together, but explain it to you as I was going. And I'm very sure that if I spend some more time with this, it will become a very integral part of my workflow very quickly. So, yeah, uh, I'm well impressed with Infinistrip. Uh, thanks to PSP for sending me this. This isn't a paid video. This isn't a sponsorship. They just sent me this to play with. And yeah, well impressed. So, back to me in the studio. And there we have it. I hope that was useful for you. Thank you very much for watching. And tune in for the next video. Uh, check out the Patreon, like I said before, the Discord, uh, the subscribe, all that kind of stuff. I'm sure you've heard it all before. And stick around for more videos about music tech stuff. We're gonna be doing something about Superior Drummer 3. And we've got videos coming up for plugins from Voxengo. Uh, check out our Reaper tutorials if you haven't already. I'm guessing quite a few of the guys watching this and girls will have found us through that. There's so much more coming up. Live streams all the time. Weekly podcast. Thank you, everybody. And we'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. Hey, everyone. That might be the end of the video. But if you fancy carrying on this conversation, we have a Discord server. Link is in the description. We're also on Patreon, which is something you can really help us with. We also are on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Hot Pole Studios. See you there.